previous videos, we've tracked our product across the world and finally landed it on U.S. soil. That's great, but we're not quite there yet. Our product is currently in a port warehouse on the West Coast, and we needed to get to us on the East Coast. We've got two basic options, rail or truck. Rail is faster, can carry significantly more weight, and is less expensive. A truck gives us more control and has fewer checkpoints. Ultimately, we use both. It just depends on the situation. First, let's get it on a train and get it to the East Coast as quickly and inexpensively as possible. Stop me if you've heard this one. The railway is experiencing a worker shortage. Optimistic predictions say that it'll get better soon, but that doesn't help us now. If a train can't run safely, thankfully, it simply won't run. In the meantime, train companies are doing the best that they can with what they got. Because of the strain on ports, some companies have switched to rail for shipments that they used to sail down the coast. This is creating a new strain on the rail system. At least if it's on a train, we'll know when it's going to arrive, right? Remember, we're not talking about a single train. We're talking about hundreds of them, with 50 cars apiece, and they're spread out over 3,000 miles on a single line. Keeping a close eye on where everything is during the best of circumstances is a challenge. With the added stress on the system and the decrease of workers, tracking freight is next to impossible. So a company will document that our product has left the port train yard, but they may not be able to tell us exactly where it is until it's checked out at the end of the line. One of the train yards that we were supposed to run through, somewhere in the Midwest, has had a COVID outbreak. Nationally, we're starting to get a handle on it, but even now, outbreaks are continuing to pop up. For the sake of speed, let's say that we were diverted at the last minute to a different train yard and avoided the extra few days of stoppage. But just know it could have happened to us. End of the line. The train pulls in and is ready to be short-handed. This part's boring. We'll fast forward again through the part where the freight gets off the train and is ready to be picked up by a truck. Unfortunately, Horizon can't just go get it with our trucks. The Port Authority is very specific about who can and can't pick up containers. We work with a lot of great companies, and we have a good network for this. Keep in mind, Horizon hasn't actually touched any of the flooring yet. But the next stop is our warehouse. Our suppliers have worked very hard to get the floor to us, and now all they have to do is reach out to their contacts at the trucking company and find out that they are short-handed. To no one's surprise, the trucking industry is currently undergoing a massive worker shortage. There are also issues with keeping the trucks running. Remember all those ships sitting at the dock waiting to unload? One of them is carrying a bunch of truck parts needed to fix broken trucks. Shipping demand is up 65% in the US. A different way to look at that is for every 100 trucks we needed, we now need 165. This has caused an upsurge in cost, but it's also created delays. Trucking companies are booking up so fast, suppliers are having to settle for long delivery dates that they never would have accepted in the past. And bidding wars, in some cases, are pricing suppliers out. Now we've got a floor that is one truck ride away from our warehouse. Let's wave our magic wand and create a truck and a driver that can finally get it to us. We are so excited to see the truck backing into our warehouse that we have a little celebration. Our sales rep picks up the phone to call you and tell you the good news, but there's a problem. In the next video, we'll explore some of the issues that are present even after we've finally received our product. Horizon Forest Products, the hardwood experts.